Good evening, hope you are well and good. Um, we're going to be live in just a sec or two. We're just going to be doing half an hour of ladder and learning, having a bit of fun. Okay, right, let's find an announce button and let's get the show on the road. Um, and let's see if I can remember how to copy and paste. I hear that is traditional and also useful. Hey Thrush, how you doing? If only, well, it's just you and me, Thrush. If only you'd, uh, if only you'd, uh, your views had uh, sort of uh, rocked through on the arena last night, I'm sure we would have been in a better place. But, <laughs> but it's d democratic, people can vote for what they want. Okay, I'm just going to announce that we're going to go live. We're going to play a bit of the um, the Fibat, Fibat Druid deck that we played on Monday. I want to get a bit more into it. I like Wednesdays because if we pluck a deck out of the ether for the first time, very often when we play it for the first two or three times, you're getting used to the deck. So on New Player Monday, we sort of learn the deck on the fly, and then Wednesday we can really get stuck into it. So I'm looking forward to three, four games or so in a row, and let's see how these go. Okay, right, I'm going to be live in just a tick. Okay, let us go live and get cracking. Evening PG. Okay, let's go. We're announced, we're good. I think we're tweeted. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm Hammy, this is Falcroft Cast. Hope you are well, and we're going to be ladder and learning. We're going to be doing some of the mid range Druid Dread Five Bats World Championship winning final Hearthstone World Conquering deck that we took a look at in New Player Monday on Monday. So, generally on New Player Monday, we get slightly stuck into the decks. We've got it on the right hand side there for your perusal, and then on Ladder Wednesday, on our Wednesday night when we jump into the ladder, whatever point we are, I think we're about rank 5th. Uh, that's a bit optimistic, 16 at this point in time. Um, we will see how it goes, so that will be good to take a look at. But I quite enjoy Ladder Wednesdays, and if you see a deck on you play Monday, why not check out the Ladder Wednesday that corresponds on the same week, because we can really get more under the skin of the deck and see how it's going. This Druid Midrange deck, we make sure we get table position in the early game, we get control, we ideally ramp into some very big and nasty minions as early as possible. Um, I'm playing a mage, I would like some early game control, Savage Ride do not need, the Druid of the Chlorine Swipe will help me, but I'm actually going to go for a full on mulligan and try and grab some Innovate and Rampy Minions. You can see in our right column there, Shade of Naxes, early game things, but Game Hunter, okay, Yeti, with a coin, if we'd grabbed an Innovate we would have been in an excellent position to get out of very early um, mid game. So we've got the option to very aggressively ramp if we so desire, but generally speaking we just flood the table get big minions out while keeping the enemy's side of the table under control. We grab control in this mid game with our big tanks, our big attacking minions, Lothair before Tempo, Ken, Bloodhooth and similar. We can bust through tanks, the Ancients of Laws to top, top up our health. We actually have Kel'Thuzad Widley instead of Sonaris as our ending finishing card. So I'm just going to armor up, tap for one, nothing on the table so far. <laughs> this deck is inferior to the one we made yesterday, says PG. Uh, 
Okie dokie, alright, so I'm still going to be struggling. What could I be ramping into? Could, oh, that's now error there. I should have coined into a chill wind. Um, I should be looking a little bit more. All right, major secret goes down. I can coin into a uh, coin into a druid with a claw or something to set up the table. Down goes an Aretha and Arcanist, and that's going to get bag, big, bad, and nasty, pretty, pretty quickly. Okay, so that Arcanist, can I remove it? Well, Swipe is not going to get that done. Wrath is also not going to get that done. The big game hunter, um, I can BGH that off the table very, very shortly. Um, I can put up a tank, which will then make sure it will get removed also. Um, I'm going to take a chance on take a chance on this and see if we have something nasty going down. Secret wise, is that going to be a mirror entity? Ooh, very nasty indeed. This is not what we want to play into. Oh, and this is looking a very nasty start to today's game. Kalthazad, recommended by Thresh Truly, certainly was. Should be quite a fun one. Um, but in the meantime, while I'm sort of semi-watching, we have seen a horrible, horrible table come together. The secret is gone, but already our opponent has a very strong uh, side to the table. So, we could do with some spell damage. That spell damage would really give us a nice position to start trading stuff away. So, Wrath is not going to let us pick anything away. I can keep the big game hunter to remove various bits and bobs. Um, coining is not going to help too much. I can certainly slow things down with a bear and I can start tapping away at these various things. However, that bear is probably going to get zapped away by a nuke or similar. Okay, so we're getting a few well played, some hints of BM, but not to worry. So, we can make a very, very solid side of the table. First up, I can big game hunt. It's going to still remove that. I can then wrath. Uh, that's for the one and card draw. So, we can still do this. So, this is not a done deal. Um, what I just need to do is make sure if I can somehow get some control in play here, then this will be all well and good. I can actually then um, throw down the Sun Fury Protector. We got a double tank there. So this game is not done. Remember that I've still got my two. Um, if you look in our right column, my two ancient of law. So we've managed to stabilise the table a bit. If he gets down another secret and that erythral arcanist starts getting powerful, that's going to be painful. But really, um, it's not done. We can heal ourselves up with ancient of law. That's okay. Remember, five per ancient of law, and that's a five-five minion that we can do some things with. Um, Down goes a fire blast. There's that. We've seen the little ramp as well. Is there going to be a direct trade? No. Okay, so we've still got the Arcanist on the table. And he's been using those for the trade. So this gives us a nice position to really grab table control. Now, do have options? Can't sadly jump into the Kel'Thuzad. I think a straightforward swipe. 4-1-1. One, one, clears the deck very, very nicely. And then we have a couple of options here. I think the Shade of Naxxramas will start threatening, we can just start tapping away. Of course, we're getting towards late game, there could still be fireballs, there could be various nasty nukes and other bits. Definitely got lucky with the chill win, playing that this early has a risk of getting a tiny minion in the sea giant out, says Thresh. Yep, absolutely. Um, it was a risky secret play, but I think we've just about managed to get around it a little. Okay, now we have some trading options here. Um, if things die, then I can pop them back up again. Savage Raw is an option. The Black Knight's not going to be clearing anything. Kel'Thuzad is going to certainly give him some things to think about. But alas, I can't quite knock that off the table. So I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to charge that in to drop its health, knowing that Kel'Thuzad will mean that it gets a reborn.
Oh, there's a faceless, a <laughs> faceless on a KT. Oh, it's all going crazy. Followed up with a poly to poly my KT, and now things go nuts. Can even sacrifice this if he so desires, but he's going to drop that low and down to one. Now, if only I could be sacrificing Savage Raw, I'm not going to be able to get eight damage on the table. This is looking a little bit nest. If only I could turn that into a tank, that would be good indeed. Let's drop an Ancient of Law for a five health restore. I could then Wild Growth, but that's just going to give me card draw. Feels like I'm just going to have to remove. Oh, that was a silly play because that's just going to get reborn. Um, should not have done that. <laughs> um, Someone all friendly minions that died. Yep, that was a silly play. Okay, I think we're probably in some form of trouble here, but we'll see if we can somehow wheedle our way out of it. Hey, woofy boofy. Okay, we are now looking in a nasty old place. Well, Keeper of the Grove would let me... I can't move anything with a tank, which is nasty. I can drop a silence on KT, which will help a bit. The Black Knight is not going to remove anything. Oh, Mirror Entity, summoning copies of minions all over the place. Um, he does have lethal. I'm not going to zap that. So let's give this up as a lost cord, then try another game. A fresh into BMR rank 16. Okay, so challenges there. Maybe a slight misplay or two. I think um, need to 200% focus. Um, so let's see what we can grab now. Okay, that was. I like this deck. Um, the challenges there were that basically he did get reasonably lucky with the mirror entity. I didn't really play around the secret properly. Could have tried to play a smaller minion. And I didn't get quite grab control in the mid game. He then sort of nicked it off me. Cool. Inferno Shaman. Uh, let us see what we have. Right, against a Shamil, I'll quite like some early gameness. Swipe is good, but I'm going to go for a full on trade. Okay, right, so we've got an Innovates, can't be getting into Claw Druid, going first. So, tapping on the table, waiting up. Lots of fire drops in there, hey, Kiski! Looks good, good to see you too. School, congrats to you, Kiski. Um, okay, right to turn two. I am playing slightly slow, I do apologize for that. There's a little bit of multitasking going on this stream, this probably won't be a YouTube vid.
Okie dokie, alright, so turn three, we've got a Savage Roar that we're not going to be using, however we now have the ramp play, so do I want to go for a Spectral Knight and start wrecking? I think I'm going to start wrecking with the Spectral Knight rather than go for the Claw Druid. Turn three, we have a turn five card on the table, and of course the Spectral Knight, big fairy dragon, cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers, so that's going to be the the solid. Great to have in uh, SS Lee Lifter, welcome to you. Great to have you with. We're just having a look at a mid rangey druid and enjoy. Okay, we've got a tanky totem down there, a savage roar, a wrath. Wrath will let me do one and draw a card. I like drawing cards. Drawing cards in card games is great. Like Tony the Tiger. Oh, great! I'm just going to go for a control play here. Got my uh, Spectral Knight down, I've got one armor, I'm feeling good. Feeling nicely under control. Hey! Spectral is definitely the way to go to play around that turn 3 hex. Thresh, that's such a good point. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> ah. And hello to Lurd. Hammy got destroyed. Oh, PG. So harsh. Right. Um, what else do we have? This is feeling better. I could swipe. It's a very aggressive swipe. Very, very aggressive swipe. Um, he may have more totems down if I do save it for spell damage later, or do I just, uh, when you're ahead, get further ahead? Why not? This is very aggressive. I could have gone quite easily for a Claw Druid, similarly. Um, but just keeping the table locked down. Now, it'll, that was an egg. A slightly expensive clear of that four. I could have even traded it with the minion, so let's see if I regret it. Dropping the Farseer, throwing down a Toto, unless it's a Stone Claw, which it's not, but you always have to take the spell damage seriously. Okay, well, I've got a Grove Keeper. I'd ideally keep that for a Silence or something a bit more uh, punchy, but what I can probably do is... I'm going to cat form it, just to get another minion on the table. Keep the table locked and wrecked under control. Ooh, and a three zap going in, showing exactly why fire elementals are so dang nasty. Spectral Knight is down, down and doomed. Um, I can take this out. Force of Nature and Savage Roar will be my, um, let's do the mass, 6 into 12, 14 damage finisher. But I'm not in a position to finish things off just yet. So, options. Um, I'm going to throw down a Yeti. I'm going to top up there. I'm then just going to keep playing removal. Slightly uh, aggressive style of removal there. Left the Yeti down. I could do with my Sun Fury Protector. Continued thoughts and things. Um, right, the very, very nasty Spirit Wolf also going down. Two of those. Even the card draw with the Gnomish Inventor is quite awkward. Um, Savage Roar, I don't really want to be sort of sitting and going through those things. Um, the Black Knight, I just have a feeling that because he's a shaman, we might see an Earth Elemental. So I'm going to hang on to that Black Knight for the time being. What I may like to do actually is I'm going to go for the two damage. Um, now let's go and wreck these. I'm going to um, wild growth. Get some of those traded off the table. Now, of course, there could still well be a lightning storm or something similar. Um,
Suki dooki. We've got broad table position coming into our slightly ramped turn nine, but shamans have plenty of damage spells that can easily wreck our party on those two shiny gold minions. Yep, lightning bolt, zap, pow, gone. Did dark iron dwarf hits the deck? And note that I've actually not seen my uh, my um, Lotheb. My Lotheb would have been great here just to throw a spanner in the Shaman's works, but we've not been able to do that just yet. So this is the stage where I'm thinking, right, do I Savage Roar and Force of Nature just to start opening up the nasty ramp plays? Um, I'm not going to be able to make the most of my 10 mana, but that is really my 14 damage finisher. Um, if I sort of trash and clear the table there, then it's not really going to be doing huge amounts. So I'm going to drop Cairn because that's a nice tempo play. I get myself stacked up and then look to try and trade those next turn. And hello to Zano. Welcome to Zano. Good to see you. Good to see you good. Alrighty then, Lotep has been used, we've been hoisted by our own petard there, we've also had um, some wrecking of the Dark Iron Dwarf due to the airshock silencing Cairn out of the way. We're really getting controlled this evening. Pretty, pretty painful indeed. Um, Shade of Nax ideally comes earlier in the game, it's not going to be huge amounts of use at this point in time. The Black Knight, throwing this down, I'm not going to have anything to bust if I don't throw it down, so... I'm going to have to start, I think, trying to set up some trades. I'm going to throw these down now. Now, knowing my luck, a nasty tank is going to appear next scan. He's going to throw down an Earth Elemental. A uh, KSKI, yeah, it is a very tough board now indeed. Alrighty then, do do do. Okay, look, there's the tank, there's the tank that that would have busted up so so nicely. Right, I'm going to start doing silliness now. Because if we don't get something going, we're going to be having some problems. Um, right, wreck. Wreck. However, all of that wrecking is not going to get us too far because all these now die. Bye. He starts seven on the table. There is a new Hearthstone card in it's called the Illuminator. We may quickly cover that. It is absolutely nuts. Oh, wreck to the face. Okay, let's try and break the curve with our, what will probably be the final game of this evening. Right then, we have a hunter. We have a hunter. I can wild growth into a shade. I've got a swipe. I feel reasonably good with that. Let's drop that back, keeping the wild growth for a turn two bridge because there was nothing else. Well 
Okie dokie, right, so I now have my 10-2 ramp, I can just go all out and remove that name, but of course he's death rattled out that Undertaker. Let's uh, lance the boil, I'd rather get rid of the Undertaker, I can swipe into that 10-4 if worse comes to worst, depending on if he throws any death rattles, so we can see how that all goes. Okie dokie, right, that's still there, we've still got that, I can throw down a shade just very simply. Could begin ramping, but there's nothing really that I want to whack on the table turn 5, so I don't mind the shade of next. The swipe can remove that next turn. Hey, everyone join in. We are playing some Rampy Druid, seeing how it's all going. Well, I say rampy, it's more a bit of mid-range, a bit of mid-ranging. Okay, we're getting a little bit of buffy. Um, I'm just going to swipe because swipe, and I note that I'm halfway down already, it's good, uh, nearly halfway down health wise, it's good that I've got a claw druid and similar to Right, we're getting nicely buffed. We are, of course, still getting those uh, steady shots to the face, and we'll continue to do so. So against a hunter, this is just the point where um, it's good to get the table nice and all cleared up. Now I can save that till the cows come home, or I can just start swinging away. Um, it could be that he drops a beast and plays a kill command for the five damage. My shade of next needs a couple more turns before it gets fully nasty. But it's on the table and it's vulnerable now. And unleash, unleash into a creeper. Okay, well, that, he can charge two of those in. We can just leave it. Hunter's mark down to one. Very nicely done. Renders my bear inert and obsolete. And a quick hound to the face, but we're now 5-5, five five, so we can certainly do some do with that. So silencing will let me remove that without the two little E's popping up, which is always nice. Keeper of the Grove, I think with a silence, that's nice. I can deal, deal with that. We're going to go for some hardcore control. And don't forget, of course, that every turn that's going to gain 1-1, one one, so I will get myself to be a 6-5. Keep the hunter under control to this stage. If I do get KT down, uh, Kel'Thuzad, then that is going to be a nice finish. Got my Savage Roar, if I get Force of Nature. Double Unleash the Hounds. Ouch. Really throwing things down. Dog to the face, very nicely put. Um, okay, a shade of next could be another, another shade of next could cause some pain. Could throw down a wild growth in the spectral. Oh, but I'm actually down to 10 health. Got to be careful with that. <laughs> very careful indeed. Um, so as a result, I'm going to armor up. What we are really needing now is um, need our ancients of law. Thanks for stopping by, SSLE. Good to have you. 
Right then, in turn, and we're all good to go. And uh, I, I think I'm just inclined just to go straight into a keeper here for the silence, which would be nice. I can't buff the health. The, the strength of uh, anything there. I can do a double down to take those two down. KT, if I'd thrown KT down actually, that would have been a very nice option. Do, 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 do. Okay, right, no big game hunter's going to be removing anything there. Um, so, a shade of necks could help me a bit, but remember I'm sort of poised on the edge, so that's going to have to get binned regardless. Um, I think a Nex, a Wild Growth, there's no real point in, unless I can think of some nice combos next turn. Uh, Armouring up would have been a good plan, let's just get that out of the way. I'm going to be taking two a go as it is. Those are going to get, have to get traded away, but a secret's going to come in. Okay, so this is where it's going to help us. We'll get one of those back, but a secret's going to hit the table, so it's going to be close. Aware of King Crush, I like your style. Okay, right, well, what do I want to do? If there's going to be something going boom, I need to throw that in to start with. Explosive trap, yes, but remember we have Kel'Thuzad, they're all going to come back to life. Well, it's down to a five. Can I finish? No. Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Or can I? Force of Nature, Savage Roar. What does that give me? That gives me six, twelve, fourteen, twenty. It doesn't give me quite the finish that I need. So I can finish next turn. What I need to do is just get myself not dead. I can finish next go. I'm not going to save a draw either. There's a late head. That would be nice to play. Oh, the pain, the pain and torment, all done. Well, we were close. I don't think I quite had a lethal there. How disappointing. So we were, we were near, we were near, but so near, but so far. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to uh, the uh, pain, the pain, <laughs> but some learning there. Um, again, I think that there could have been a win there. I might have been had a move. Uh, that, that was not my finest play evening at all. So, <laughs> but. Uh, it was good to play a few games and uh, good to see what was going down. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll probably be back tomorrow for either some fun games or similar others. Um, hope you have enjoyed that. That was a, a very nice Druid Ramp deck. We had some better luck with it on Monday and today it just seemed a bit funny. But I've no doubt that high levels of play with me being a bit more focused, that could be very, very good. So as always, if you're watching on YouTube, come out, check out twitch.tv forward slash Velcroftcast. Um, we're live Monday through Friday, times in the bottom left, tweet on at Felcraftcasts when we're live. Um, don't forget to check out youtube.com forward slash Felcraftcasts. Over 100 episodes of your wonderful company in the half stone half hour, Heroes of the Storm, some other things do. And last but not least, the website, Felcraft.org. On there you have um, some splendid other things that live better as articles rather than as um, videos. So, good to see you, and hopefully see you tomorrow. We'll do some fun things on Thursday. Take it